Hi guys, welcome back to Girl Therapy. I'm your host, Nicole. I hope everybody had a fabulous week. So I'm gonna give you guys a few life updates and something that I wanna talk about with you guys on here because I talked about it on TikTok, but I haven't had a chance to address it here. I'm becoming more comfortable speaking about it. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. Oh my God, this is like probably the most wholesome thing I've ever done. But it's something that I did not see coming and it's very interesting and something that I didn't expect to like so much. But just two weeks ago, I went to Vu Church with my friend. I have not had a relationship with God, I don't think ever, honestly. I grew up Catholic, got my communion, I did my confirmation, I only went to church for holidays or essentially when I was forced to or when I had to go to be able to get confirmed. After that, and especially like after my grandparents died, because they were the ones who went to church more regularly and would like us to go, we stopped going. And the only time I've ever been into church after that is for funerals or for weddings. I have just never felt an urge to have a relationship with God because I always tied religion and God hand in hand, if that makes sense. Like when I was getting confirmed, I was studying religion. I was just, we were reading these stories. We were reading the Bible. We were trying to make sense of things that I I guess couldn't really apply to my life. Like when you're younger, these stories, they're just stories. I was like, okay, like what is this? I just have to memorize this. It's just taking up room in my brain. I don't know what any of this means. And there's nothing really to relate it back to when you don't have a lot of life experience, when you're not going through a lot of things when you're younger, when you're just a little kid. I'm like, how is this helpful at all? What does this even mean? How is this ever going to apply to my life? And also this is being forced on me. I don't want to be here. I want to be in the playground. I want to be running around. I want to be outside. I don't want to be in this sad, cold room after school and do an hour or two of this. However many times a week, I don't even remember. I blocked it out of my memory. It was just never a fun place for me to go. I never was like excited to go to church. I never wanted to go. I never understood any of the sermons. I don't know what the hell they were saying. I just didn't enjoy it. Just recently, like I said, my friend invited me to Vu Church with her. And she's someone who has, who's always been spiritual as well, similar to me. That's kind of how I held on to whatever like relationship with God I had or faith I had was through my spirituality and understanding that the universe is this big place and we're not in control of things and and putting my faith in the universe and manifesting and all that stuff because she enjoyed it so much and because me and her are so similar and I just felt open to it like Jordan had invited me to church a while back with her when I lived with her this was like I guess last year at this point almost I was open to it but I still kind of had my like hesitations about it because I was just like I don't know. I was open to it, but I just never went. I never felt the urge to actually go. Like I never felt so pulled to go. As soon as Caitlin, my friend, invited me, I was like, I'm coming. I want to go really bad. And it was so interesting because I've never felt that like pull to go so badly. And I'm sorry if this isn't interesting to you, but maybe it will be, or maybe it'll help you act on something that you've been feeling like you've been wanting to do. Or if you want to explore this as well, but you felt weird about it, or you felt like that's not for me, maybe this will open up your eyes or open up your mind. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. I'm just sharing my experience. And I went and I really, really loved it. I understood now the community aspect of it. It was really cool to see people who were like in my gym, in my day-to-day life be there. Like I saw them in the gym earlier and then they're at church and they're like, hey, and it's everybody. It's all different types of people. It's people who I would never expect to be in church, not because I think they're bad people, but because you see them. Like I see this like guy who's like big and like muscly and has tats all over the place, like on his forehead. (laughs) And like the last thing I expect him to be doing on Sunday is going to church. I don't know. It's like maybe that's a bad thing to assume, but I just, I don't know. I just wouldn't assume that about that person. He's like at church and he's like, hi, it's so good to see you guys here. And everybody's so kind and welcoming and warm. I immediately felt like I don't I don't want to say like at home because that maybe will sound dramatic, but I really just felt so comfortable. And I was like, oh, like these are like these are my people. These are good people. Everybody here has like feels pure. 
and I feel like I just learned something and I feel like there's it's impossible to leave that that situ that sermon that such like community and feel pessimistic and feel negative and feel angry or sad it's impossible you leave and you feel like more full and you just feel happy you feel positive you feel like you can make a difference or that you are growing I immediately after I went I was like I'm so excited for next week I made a TikTok about my experience and some of you guys were commenting and you were like I love Voo Church all this stuff which is amazing I love to hear that you guys also go there because it just makes me feel even closer to you guys but some of you guys were like I'm praying for you and which was so interesting for me to hear because at my immediate initial reaction was like don't pray for me like you don't I don't deserve that like I'm, I'm new here like I don't know but but then I was like no we're all one of the same if that makes sense like we're all part of the community it doesn't matter if you're new here we're all just building a relationship with God on our own terms and that's what I never understood was like I get to build whatever relationship I want with him and I can have faith in whatever I want and walk with faith however I want some of you guys dm me too just being like I always knew that you would end up there like I was, I've been like praying to God that he was gonna like bring you home and like he did. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. It's so weird. Like it's really making me really emotional because yesterday I cried after service too and I almost cried in service. And like, I've never experienced that before. One of you guys um, also DM me and you were like, I was behind you. I, I need to just read it. I like screenshotted it because it literally gave me chills. I didn't mean to like talk so in depth about this. I This is gonna be part of today's, episode is this about like my faith but like finding my faith but yeah I, I'm sorry I didn't mean for this to be like the whole the <laughs> intro hi beautiful I can't believe you came to on my for you page I'm pretty sure I was sitting behind you at service and I remember I couldn't stop feeling the biggest sense of healing coming from you I want to come up I wanted to come up and hug you after but it was too crowded Vu changed my life I was in the exact same way going into it and now I'm a literal church girl I can't wait to see how God moves in your life and I was just like wow I could feel it too. Like being there, like I was explaining this to my friend and why I started crying after our service was because I never understood what it meant to like have faith. Like I never understood when people are like have faith or they have faith or they have this relationship with God. Like I didn't get it. And I that's why I felt like it was weird. <laughs> Sorry, but like it was just kind of like, I was like, this is like a little weird. Like, I don't know. It's like maybe like a little culty. Like, I don't know. They started playing this song about like how like you're coming home or he's like, you're coming home. I don't know, like he's, it's calling you home. And that's what started making me emotional because I was like, I literally feel like so like at peace here. And I felt like my whole like life was leading up to this moment of me coming here. And like me and Caitlin just like kind of became friends recently. We've, I've known her forever, but we, we, for some reason we like never made it happen. Like the hanging out thing. She's in my friend group. I'd see her at stuff, but we never like really like hung out, invested time in our like one-on-one -on -one friendship. And like suddenly we just started to. And then we became best friends, like we're inseparable now. And it's so interesting, like the timing of that all where she's the one who like brought me here. I just think the timing was so right for me and her to become friends and then for her to also bring me to Voo Church with her. I don't think I was like ready beforehand. So when they started playing that song of like coming home, I was like, just, I brought me to tears. And then when I was in the car, we were just talking about how we feel. And I was just like, I don't know. I get it now. I feel like I go into there. All the weight is like lifted off my shoulders. I feel like calm. I feel a sense of ease and I feel a sense of like I can take a deep breath and like just trust that things are happening correctly and that everything's going to be OK. And if it's not OK, it's not the end. It's so interesting for me to say the word faith, but it's like, I have faith that things will be okay. Like, I feel like I used to be like, I know everything's will be okay. Like everything happens for a reason type of thing. But like, that's just faith. That's just having faith. And I didn't realize how aligned the things that I wanted and everything was with like the things that they say in church, which is kind of what I want to get into today, where he talked about like having faith and how I don't know if you listened to last week's episode and if you didn't, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> That's not very like, I don't know if you listened to last week's, <laughs> whatever, I'll just leave that in. If you didn't listen to last week's episode, I talked about the law of assumption and how it's a basically just assuming, it's basically like knowing things are happening for you and you don't have to question it. 
And that's how you get your dream life. That's how you manifest your dream life. And I gave the example of like you wake up in the morning, you immediately go to the bathroom and you brush your teeth and you know that when you brush your teeth, your teeth are going to be clean. You don't have to decide whether or not you're going to do that. You just do that. He was saying how having faith is, is just having faith in the now. You have to be able to see and to know that good is going to come out of whatever is happening that things are happening for a reason. And even when things aren't making sense, even when shit is like blowing up in front of your face or life's just not happening how you want it to or bad things are happening, you have to have faith that there's something happening in the background that you can't see. And it goes along with what I said last week about like how they teach us seeing is believing, but that's not true. You have to believe You have to be so sure of something happening that you don't need to see it to believe it. And if that's how we create, like I used the example last week, like a building. If you're trying to build something, if you're an architect, you have to imagine it first. You have to go through all these things. You have to draw it out. You have to do whatever it is that architects do. I don't know. Know that you can bring that to life and that you will bring that to life. And then that's when the building gets built and then you can actually see the physical building. But you can't see the building that you want to build, right? You have to like know that you can do that. I was like, wow, that's so interesting. I was literally just talking about that with the law of assumption. And it's interesting how those two are kind of going hand in hand. So faith is basically just being certain. You have to be certain of what you cannot see. You need to have it now, in the now. Even when shit's going terrible, you need to have your faith. We can just sit in it. We can just rest in it. We can just know that things are going to be okay. We can't always control things, but what we can control is our mindset and how we react to certain things happening in our lives. And I I just hit him also just being like, you need to have faith that everything's going to work out and things are happening exactly how they're supposed to. And I just want to relate this back to something that just happened to me recently. So I had a long-term ex. I've really only had one true boyfriend in my life and I dated him for four and a half years it was I want to say it's a serious relationship because four and a half years is serious but we were also so young that it's like at that point in my life did I think I was gonna marry him yes but like also was that so far away from happening also yes we're like I don't know 18 19 when we started dating (laughs) even if I date you for you know 10 years or like eight years that's when maybe the mark where we'd get engaged so whatever four and a half years dated him Nothing really bad happened. Like He was a great boyfriend to me. We were the best, I think, that we could be to each other at that time, at that young age where you don't really know how to be in a relationship. You're not really independent. You know, like he was like taking me on dates that like his parents were paying for sometimes. So it's just a different feel. Me and him broke up because I just felt like I was missing something. I also felt like I needed to find myself by myself. I needed to spread my wings. I needed to do things. And it was really hard at the beginning. Like we were living in the same city when you break up with somebody and you live in the same city. And like we were living in New York City with the same friend group and stuff like that. It's difficult. Eventually, I found my own path. Eventually, I started to do the things that I wanted to do. I started creating my social media. I ended up moving to Miami, which was something that was never on my bingo card when I was younger. I thought I was going to live in New York City forever. I was diehard New York City. I'm going to die here on these streets. Truly, that's how I felt. I loved New York City so much when I lived there. And then so so much stuff happened in life where COVID happened and all this stuff where I ended up going home. And then I got in this really bad, weird relationship that I don't chalk up to be a relationship at all that then caused me to go into this depression that then caused me to make me to make me want to do a major life change because I felt like I was robbed of a year of, of my life and I lost who I was. And I was like, I need to just go have fun and I need to go figure out who I am and what I want to do and stop letting people control my life. And that's why I picked up and moved to Miami. I decided to move to Miami on a whim. It was like a random Tuesday. I was like, let me move to Miami. And I moved to Miami on Friday. Dead ass. That's how it happened. And I didn't know if I was going to stay here. I packed a few suitcases, drove my car down here by myself. No idea what to do. No job, no nothing. End up here. And here I am now with my social media platform, with this podcast in my beautiful apartment. I haven't seen anything from my ex, um, in a while like he unfollowed me which totally valid (laughs) I think he was sick of me talking about him sometimes but also I think like he struggled with moving on from our relationship 
I saw him maybe at Christmas two years ago. Like we were always kind of drawn back to each other when we were in our hometown because we were so comfortable with each other. And I think we were just curious. But since then, I haven't seen him. It was like cut ties, cold turkey. We still have mutual friends. And one of our mutual friends posted a story with him and his new girlfriend. And I haven't seen him or I haven't heard of anything. So seeing this, I was like, wow, this is so crazy. So I go, of course, I do what a girl does and I stalk her. She's public. Thank God. I see them doing stuff together that like me and him probably would have done together or talked about doing together. You know, like they're in Paris together, which is it's funny because it's like I went to Paris. I made that happen for myself. And I just went with my best friend and it looked different than what I wanted it to look like when I was younger. You know, I eventually I was always like, I'm going to go to Paris with my person. I'm going to go to Italy with my person. I did go to Italy. I went with myself on my person and I met a few friends there. And he went to Italy, too, with his friends. And now he's with his new girlfriend and they're doing all this stuff together. And I could look at that life and be like, that could have been me. And it could have been me. And I mean this in the nicest way possible. I'm so happy it isn't. Everything happened how it was supposed to. If I stayed with him, I would have ended up staying in New York City. I 100% would have ended up staying in New York City with him. I maybe would have stayed in hospitality or fashion or whatever industry that I was in that I didn't love. And that would have been my life. I would never have moved to Miami. I would never have the friends I have now. I would never be in this apartment. I, I, ju- I just wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here today. And it just goes to show that there is so much stuff happening in on that is happening in the background that we don't know that we can't see and having faith and and holding on to that is the best thing you can do for yourself and having it at all times because life is working out for you life is happening for you you just have to hold on to that and live in the now and understand that if it's if it's not okay it's not the end If it's not okay, something bigger is happening. Something more is happening for you. You have to trust, and I'm sorry if the word God makes you uncomfortable, but I'm starting to get used to using it, that while you are sleeping, while you are resting, while you are taking a step back, while you're not working, he's working and he's got you and he's taking care of things and he's handling things. So you can rest in your faith knowing that things are going things are going to work out. He's never going to show up early. He's never going to show up late. He's going to show up right on time, right when you need him. And when when you get that Hail Mary, when you get the opportunity, when whatever it is, when he throws you that like this is your moment, this is your chance. This is what this has all been leading up to. You grab it by the balls and you take it. And you show up. When he shows up, you have to show up. That's the only way things work out. There's been so many times when I've been offered opportunities of like shit that I'm like, should I do this? Should I do this? If it if it is presenting itself to you, say yes, show up, do it. Because you never know where that is going to lead you. So that's kind of my like little spiel on faith. Kind of hand in hand with knowing that things are working out for you. And I hope that brings you some peace and with whatever it is that you're going through right now. Because I know we're all going through shit always. The next thing that I want to talk about is stop comparing yourself to others. That's that's what the episode's gonna be about today, and it's what he talked about. Rich is the guy who the guy who leads the Voo Church was talking about um, not comparing yourself to others, and I think this is a really great topic to talk about because it's something that I just found myself doing again. I feel like I get in these cycles where when I'm really good, I'm really good. And then when things get stagnant, like I go through waves with my content and with my social media, and that's not in my control. It's like one day I'll have 100,000 views and the next day I'll have 1,000. And I don't know what's going on. And it's in those moments where I'm in like the pits where I'm just kind of like, what am I doing? And I start looking at other people's content because I'm like, what are they doing right? It's not in a way, it is in a comparison way because I'm like, should I be doing that? Should I change my style? Because sometimes we have to adapt, right? We have to like get ideas sometimes from other people. But I start comparing myself and I'm like, why don't I have that growth? Why isn't it happening for me? Whenever I get in that slump, whenever I get in that like hole of self-doubt is when I want to give up the most. Is when I say, fuck it. 
They're already doing it. They already have the followers. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? I lose every ounce of motivation when I start comparing myself to other people. Because in my head, I'm just like, why would I even try? They're doing it. They did it. It happened for them. If it was going to happen for me, it would have happened already. And it's such a toxic mindset to have. And I hate when I get like that. It doesn't feel good because social media is what I love. Creating content is what I love. Doing this is what I love. So to want to throw it all out because somebody else is being successful is crazy. It's insane. But I'm valid in feeling that way. You're valid in feeling that way. If you ever feel like that, that's totally valid. But what we can't do is give up. What we can do is stop comparing ourselves to people who aren't us, to people who have completely different lives, completely different brains. We are unique. We all have something special to offer. We're all on our own path. We're all on our own journey. And if you try to mimic, to mock, to copy somebody else's life, what somebody else is doing exactly, you're missing out on your own journey. You're missing out on your own path. And you're missing out on your own destiny. You might end up doing things that aren't aligned with you. You might end up doing things that aren't even you. You're going to become a different person. And you will never be successful being a different person. You're brought into this planet unique. You have to offer something unique. You can't just try to be somebody else. If you're trying to be somebody else, you're never going to be yourself. And then you're robbing yourself of that. And then you're robbing the world of that. I liked what he said. I wrote a few things down that he said. He said, You're being robbed of the peace that you deserve today because you're trying to find a reason or an explanation. When I sit and I see my social media, my followers, and I'm comparing myself to somebody else and I'm going, why didn't it happen for me? Where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? What are they doing that I'm not doing? Why do they deserve that? First of all, that sounds disgusting. Second of all, I am literally, I can feel the joy leaving my body when I do that. When I could just sit where I'm in now and be like, wow, what I've created is amazing. And I trust that I have something special to offer and it'll all figure itself, like it'll all make sense in more time. But if I sit here and I relish in that, I'll never get there. Sitting here doing all that, I'm missing my purpose. I'm not finding my purpose. I'm robbing myself of that journey and I'm robbing you guys of something that I could offer you that's different, that's unique. And I'm not living my life authentically. Try to think about it like this. We're a battery pack, like our phones. And this is just an example that I randomly made up, so I don't know if it's gonna make sense, but let's see. We wake up, we have 100% battery. We probably use like 50% of that battery just to like get through life, daily things, going to the gym, whatever. 30% of that battery goes to like work, things that we have to do. Now, what does that leave us? 20%, right? Not really great at math. 20%. Are you going to use that 20% on yourself? Or are you going to use that 20% giving it to other people, comparing yourself to other people, judging other people, wanting what other people have, being angry? Is that what we're going to use that for? That doesn't seem very constructive. Take all of that energy that you've ever used wishing you were somebody else, comparing yourself to somebody else, scrolling through social media, looking at other people's social media, because social media is the worst in that sense, where I could see somebody right now, if I pulled up my social media, probably like in Italy or on a boat in Capri or in Greece or on vacation with her boyfriend. And I could be like, I don't have that. Like, Why isn't that me? Should I be doing that? And then I've just wasted my morning being like, why am I not in Capri on a boat? And you start to think like, am I a loser? (laughs) Am I doing life wrong? Did I do things wrong? Or you see a girl and she has like, she just got lip filler or she just got her nose redone. Oh, I just saw a girl get her boobs redone. Now recently I've been looking at my boobs and I'm like, should I be getting my boobs done? Like, This is real, actually. This is real. (laughs) I've never thought about getting implants before. One of my friends just got her boobs done and they look so good. And I'm like, I don't know, like maybe I need my boobs done. But then it, it was like it made me insecure about my boobs now. And I've always loved my boobs. I've always like loved my little boobs. I've always loved like 
how they like a little hang a little bit. I love that they were natural. I love that they're just my boobs. Like I'm like, oh, they're perfect. They're not too big, not too small. But then I see her boobs and I'm like, but hers are so nice. Like maybe I should get a boob job. Like I was like, I don't know how, to, how like I'm going to act if I get a boob job. Like, but it's like, why is boobs giving me confidence? Like <laughs> why is the idea of like, like I can act like that now. I can act however I want now. But it was like suddenly I started hating my boobs in just a matter of like the morning. Like I woke up in the morning, you know, because I looked at her boobs. And now I hate my boobs. It's like Monday at 8 a.m. Why am I hating on my own titties? What the fuck? I should be grateful that I have these titties. Some people will probably look at my titties and wish they had mine. Comparing me got me nowhere. Comparing made me insecure. And now I'm leading life with insecurities. Now I'm getting a boob job. Why? Not for me, obviously, because I never thought about getting one. Now I'm getting a boob job for other people. I'm getting a boob job so people will look at me and be like, nice boobs. What? I never wanted them in the first place. (laughs) That's crazy. And you know what? Maybe I will get a boob job one day, but that's not your business. But I just don't think that if you see me pop out with a boob job next month, like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I want it. But it's like, everybody has insecurities. Everybody has something going on. And I'm confident that if I got a boob job, it would be something else. I'd find something else to compare myself to somebody else. It will be never ending. If you are constantly comparing yourself to other people, you will never be happy with yourself. It'll be never ending 100%. There's always going to be something that you need to fix. There's always going to be something that you need to be better at. There's always going to be somebody who's better at something than you. Somebody's always going to be richer than you. Somebody's always going to have something you don't have, which is why we can't lead with those things, with those materialistic items. You have to just sit with yourself and create life for yourself. And really listen to like the things that you actually want. So that at the end of the day, when you are sitting in a house with all these things, every single thing in that house, including you, is you, is what you wanted. None of it is the pieces of somebody else. None of it stemmed from an insecurity. None of it stemmed from like, I need to prove myself. So stop being led by your insecurities. And the only way you could stop doing that is stop comparing yourself to others. If you are finding yourself, if if your social media doesn't make you feel better, if you don't leave social media, if you don't leave like watching people's stories or scrolling through your feed feeling more uplifted, then you need to really reevaluate the people that you're following. I mean, stay following me, but like <laughs> if if like somebody's making you feel a certain way, if somebody's making you feel bad about yourself and if it's celebrities, whatever it is, unfollow them. That is what you're feeding your brain. I think it also gives you such a lack mindset when you do that. You start focusing on the things that you don't have instead of the things that are right in front of you. And you start losing your faith in a way because now you're chasing. Now you're assuming. Now you're thinking, what do I have to do to get that thing? Instead of like that thing's going to come to me naturally. Like that, like if I know that if I want that thing, I know it's going to happen for me. I'm going to keep doing all the things to get me there. I'm not just going to snap my fingers and have it tomorrow. No, there's like steps that you have to take to get something. If you want a cake, you have to put in all the ingredients. You have to mix it. You have to put a little love in it. You have to put it in the oven. It has to bake for an hour or two. Then you have a cake. It's not, I want a cake and now I have it unless you go to Publix. But you know what? That, that cake doesn't taste, that cake doesn't taste as good. You didn't make it. Somebody else's cake. Who the fuck's cake is that? Then you end up eating somebody else's cake. If you're, if you are trying to build a life not for yourself, you're going to end up eating somebody else's cake. For some reason, that makes sense. I think that makes really good sense. If you are leading with this energy of like, okay, how do I now get that thing you're chasing? And when you're chasing, you're assuming that something's not going to happen. You're assuming that you can't get that thing. Instead of just being calm and being like, I can get there. I got this. I know exactly what I have to do. If you know something is meant for you, if you are sure of yourself, you're not going to chase. That thing will come to you when it's ready. I want you guys to stop comparing yourself to other people, right? I hate when people are like, um, comment on my stuff or say things like, I wish I was you. I wish I had that. And I, I think they like mean it as a compliment, 
Like they're like, oh, like I, I'm so jealous of your curly hair. I'm so jealous of this. I want this. I wish I had your car. You have my dream car. I hate that because it's like, I feel like someone's comparing themselves to me, but they don't see all the stuff that I had to do to get there. I mean, besides my curly hair, like I was just born with that. <laughs> But the amount of products I have to put in, the amount of shit I put up with with my hair, there's always a negative to everything. There's always a downside to something. It's always a double-edged sword. So instead of focusing on like, I wish I had my curly hair, you wish you had my curly hair, you could curl your hair. I don't know. You focus on the, cur- the hair that you do have and what you can create with the hair that you do have. Because there's something that you have that I want. I wish I had silky smooth straight hair. I wish I could just walk outside and have perfectly straight hair. We all want something that we don't have. We all have our insecurities. So why are you comparing yourself to somebody else? My mission with this podcast and with everything, with the, the content that I create for you guys, is to make every single one of you feel comfortable in yourselves and to be confident in yourself and to know that you can have anything that you want. You could do anything that you want. The world is your oyster. You have to take the steps to do that though. And you have to be patient. And you have to have faith that it's all going to work out for you. And you cannot compare yourself to other people. You are unique. Sit in that. Own that. You're different. Thank God. Imagine we were all this fucking same. How boring. We all have something special to offer. And I never want you to lose sight of that. Of course, this is all mo- majority, I think, of mindset. <clears throat> There's little things that you can do. Like I said, make sure you're filling with your feed with people who bring you up and make you feel better, who don't drain you. Surround yourself with people who don't drain you. Reevaluate the people that you follow virtually and the people in real life. Surround yourself with good people. And if you do want to compare yourself to somebody, if you do want to have almost like a mentor, make sure that's a good one. Make sure it's somebody who makes you feel good, who you see their content. It's like, wow, she's in Greece right now. She made that happen for herself. She did that. Make sure it's somebody who holds similar values as you. Because you could see somebody in Greece. I could go look at my phone and see somebody in Greece. How did she get there? I don't know. Is she with a man? Did he pay her way? Is it a sugar daddy? Does she do OnlyFans? And I know I used to do that. So there's, there's literally no judgment. I did it for a little while. Could I be on a yacht right now in Greece? Easily. I could fire that bad boy right up and make lots of money. Do I want that though? No. You just never know how somebody got somewhere or how they're doing something. So if you want to compare yourself to somebody, you have to compare yourself to the whole fucking picture. You can't just compare yourself to the fact that they're in Greece on a boat. How about what they did to get there? How about how they got there? So if you're going to compare yourself to somebody, make sure that that girl who's on the boat in Greece got there a way that you want to get there. Going through life the way that you would want to go through life is navigating things the way that you want to navigate things. I want to live like Victoria Paris. I want to travel like her. And watching her content inspires me and makes me feel good. Do I compare myself to her? No. I love that for her. She's Victoria Paris. I love her. When you start looking at somebody and you start to think, I hate them because of what they have, or I'm so jealous of what they have, I'm envious of what they have, that's not healthy. But if you look at them and they say, If you say, wow, they did that. They made that happen. I can do that. She's just just a girl. I'm just a girl. I make content like her. I could do that. I'm using her as like my, my light, my inspo. She motivates me. That's motivating. That's a way of comparing yourself that's motivating. Instead of comparing myself and being like, that person's on a boat. How do I get on that boat now? Like right now, I want to be on that boat. How do I do that? Okay, let me DM some people. Let me fire up. The only fans. Let me go on seekingarrangements.com. That's that comes from a day, place of being so desperate and wanting it. For so many more shallow reasons. I know that growing to Greece is gonna feel so much better when I can do it on my own dime, and I can do it in the way that she's doing it instead of in a way that somebody else is doing it. And again, I'm not judging anybody, but this is just like for myself. So I think the biggest takeaway is the next time you try to compare yourself to somebody else, make sure you're comparing yourself to the entire picture. If you want to compare yourself to that person, you have to take on everything that that person has to go through or went through to get there. You have to take on all their hardships if you want to compare yourself to somebody else. Take on every single insecurity they have and stop just comparing yourself to what you see right in front of you because a lot of the times people just show you what's good. People just show you the best of everything. That's why social media is a highlight reel. Don't compare yourself to that. Don't compare yourself to the couples you see on social media. You have no idea. And it's true. You have no idea. I was just talking to one of my friends 
She was dating this guy for a while. They broke up for, I won't say what reasons. She goes, wow, he just got engaged to this new girl and she's explaining some stuff to us. And then I look at the girl's profile and I look at their profile together and she was telling me how horrible this man is. People can change, yes, but there wasn't that much time in between. She was just telling me like the things that he put her through. And you look at their social media and they look so happy. And maybe they are. But also, based on the things that she was telling me, it doesn't seem like this person changed. It doesn't seem like this person had good intentions. And it's like, I feel sorry for her if that stuff's going on in the background, but they have this picture-perfect life. And the, the reality is a lot of times when things look too picture-perfect, when things look too happy, when the couples are like writing those long-ass paragraphs to each other <laughs> on social media all the time and constantly sharing everything that's going on, they're probably not as happy as they're putting out there. They're probably trying to convince themselves or they're hiding something. Something more is going on. And maybe that's not the case for some people, but most of the time it is. All the happy couples that I know don't share so much of everything, aren't so in your face, are a little bit more quiet about it. So if you see a really happy couple or a really happy family or a really happy anything, a lot of the times the happiest people are also going through really hard things everybody masks the shit that's going on in their lives i've gone to parties before and you look at the social media the next day and it'll look like wow you'd think we all had the time of our lives you think that that was the best night ever or you could look at my instagram profile and i post a picture from a night out and you're like nicole had such a good night whenever i get home who knows maybe i cried that night maybe i had no fun that night maybe i left early maybe nobody was having any fun nobody talked maybe there was a massive fight but then you look at the 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 reel or the stories, the carousel, and you're just like, wow, it looked like we had a lot more fun than we did. And that's usually how things look. So I want to remind you guys that, that things aren't always as they seem. So there's no point in comparing yourself to something that didn't even actually exist or didn't even actually happen or isn't how somebody actually feels or is. You're comparing yourself to something that's unattainable, to something that isn't real. And what does that do to somebody? You're comparing yourself to something that somebody else couldn't even have or attain or doesn't have. What are we doing? The only person you should worry about is you. All right. I love you guys so much. I really feel good about this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I feel like that just flowed out of me. I really don't prepare a lot of these. I just kind of go with what comes to my brain at the time. So I hope that all made sense, but I feel like I, you know, I record these episodes for you guys, but I record these things because they're reminders for me and things that I'm going through and things that I like to look back on and listen to. I listen to my own episodes when I need to listen to them because this is kind of like my little journal and I'm really raw and open with you guys and I share a lot of everything because I think it's really helpful. So um, if this episode helped you and you're watching, leave a comment. Um, make sure you guys leave me five stars on Apple and Spotify. It does help me if you leave a review. Pass it along to a friend who maybe needs to listen or you think would enjoy this episode. But make sure you're following me on Instagram at Nicole Doyan, TikTok Nicole underscore Doyan, Snapchat Nicole Doyan. I love Snapchat. You guys know it makes me feel like we're besties. And YouTube here. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It also helps me as well. I love you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will be in your ears next Tuesday with another episode of Girl Therapy. Until then, just know that I love you and we'll talk soon. Bye.